We love two strokes and I know you guys love two strokes. So when the world's premier two stroke championship rolls into town, you know we just have to be here to see it all go down. The EMX 125 Championship truly is one of the toughest, most competitive amateur motocross championships in the world. Just qualifying for the main races is a feat in itself. You know, for, for me it's an amazing learning experience for the guys just to get involved and riding at this level is, uh, you know, it's, it's, a ma uh, it's a major, major plus for their, you know, confidence and skills and uh, just seeing where you are and as regards with speed and all the other things that come with it. So yeah, I'd just be happy for them guys to be in the race really and just to gain experience and moto time really. It's safe to say it is one of the most competitive like youth uh, or amateur road cross championships in the world, right? Oh yeah, for sure. Every year the EMX 125 class just has great racing and every year there's there's more and more coming through. So yeah, to be here with, with my boys racing in the EMX 125 class, it's, it's perfect for what, what we want to do. So without doubt, a next world champion will be in this class this weekend, right? Oh yeah, for sure. I think for me, um, being a coach and a trainer, I think it's really important you, you almost go through the process to learn to ride at this level, be at this environment. And yeah, it's obviously it's a stepping stone to MX2, MX, MXGP. So, um, so yeah, I think I think you have to do it. You have to learn the intensity and, and also be in the environment of the MXGP paddock. In this video, we'll be following some of the British riders as they try and make a name for themselves at the MXGP paddock and impress on the world stage. Let's meet our Euro fighters. Joe Brooks burst onto the EMX 125 scene in 2021. He has experience at this level and should be a top five contender. Charlie Heyman has won more British Youth Motocross Championships than I can even remember. He's been one of the fastest youth racers in the world for so many years, but this will be his first ever EMX 125 race. Walt Beanie. We know this guy, he's a former 65cc British champion and has featured on this channel many times before. He's ready to rock at Matterley. Tyler Hooley and Ben Muster went bar to bar for the Big Wheel 85 British Championship last year in one of the most epic battles I've ever seen. Tyler won the title, but both lads have made the jump up to the 125 class this season and are ready to do battle once again. In his 65 days, Ashton Bowden rode for the Grizzly Yamaha team at the European and world level. He makes his return to the GP stage this weekend. Ollie Colmer is another rider with plenty of EMX experience, but he's still young and has time to make a name for himself in this class. But the youngest of our warriors is Reese Jones. Only just turning 13 years old, the reigning small wheel 85 British champion decided to leapfrog the big wheel class and jump right in here at the deep end. It's a big leap, but if anyone can stick the landing, it's Reese Jones. We also have James Barker, Jake Davies and George Hopkins lining up this weekend. But it's safe to say that our British lads will have their hands full as they attempt to take on the fastest 125 riders in the world. The opening EMX 125 moto of the season is underway. And as always, there's a bit of cardage to start things off. These young riders giving it everything on the opening laps. And it's Rizoulis leading the way on his factory Yamaha at the moment. But look at this, a 419 machine of Joe Brooks up inside the top three. He's right up there in the mix. But he's got Ivano Van Erp all over his rear wheel. And Van Erp does in fact make the pass for third. Joe Brooks slips back a position, but a strong start for him. He's the leading Brit. Meanwhile, Charlie Heyman also with a strong start inside the top 10 on that SJP KTM. So it's Rizoulis leading the way ahead of Van Erp. Cass Falk in the mix, as is Zanke, just ahead of Joe Brooks. Charlie Heyman, though, is looking strong on that KTM. And he does make a move on Joe Brooks. A slight mistake from Joe Brooks allows Charlie Heyman to move up a position. He's now the leading Brit in this race. So a strong ride from Charlie Heyman at the moment inside the top 10, well inside the top 10. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Small Wheel 85 champion and the Big Wheel 85 British champion, that's Tyler Hooley and Reese Jones have found each other on track. So a strong start for the 13-year-old Reese Jones on his SJP KTM. 
Ben Musto and Ollie Colmer have found each other. They're just a few places up the track ahead of Hooley and Rhys Jones. So we've got a bunch of Brits inside the top 15 at the moment. A strong shown so far from these lads. The fourth by six of Ollie Colmer trying to push inside the top 10. Whilst Ashton Balgin is trying to avoid the carnage, as is Ben Musto, the 163 machine. Walt Beanie struggling in this moto, the first moto of the weekend. He's battling the flu. Meanwhile, at the front of the pack, it is mayhem. It is carnage. I think all three of the Yamaha riders held the race lead at some point in this moto. But it was Zanke who was able to keep a cool head and keep it on two wheels. He broke home to take the opening race win of 2022. Charlie Heyman was the lead Brit rider at the flag. He came home in eighth place. But I think the ride of the moto was the 13-year-old Reese Jones, who finished up in an awesome 14th position. EMX 125 race one was absolute mayhem. There were bikes flying left, right and centre, and I literally mean flying. It was crazy. But the British boys stood firm and did us proud. Charlie Heyman was right up there in the top 10, a great ride from him. Joe Brooks as well was up in the top three early on, but a couple of mistakes knocked him back. And I think he might have picked up an injury. We'll find out about that later. Elsewhere, the likes of Oli Colmer fighting back through the pack for an 11th place result. Also in the top 15, Ben Musto and the 13-year-old Reese Jones as well up there in the top 15, 14th place for Reese Jones in race one. An absolutely fantastic result for him. Well, Beanie up there in 17th, he's not feeling too hot this weekend. He's beat up the, uh, the flu, I think. So uh, he's battling through some adversity, but a top 20 result for him. Ashen Bowen fighting through adversity as well. Um, surviving some carnage, surviving the mayhem for uh, a fantastic result for him in his first ever EMX 125 race. I got a decent start, not got a good jump out the gate, but I got away about 10th out of the gate. A few kids in front of me made mistakes, so gained a few places and passed a few, and then just kept, stayed in my own race and just kept the same gap. Got 8th, I think, stayed 8th, so I'm happy with that. I had a good race today. I was last going around the first turn, uh, made a few passes, I crashed, got back to 11th, which is pretty good. Um, it was a solid race. So I think I started about 20th. A lot of boys crashed, but you know you have to be aggressive now. They won't give in. They're not just going to let you buy. You've got to show them some wheels, put it in hard and stuff. And um, you also got to be creative as well. Outside to inside, all sort of things can kind of work. First few laps were good. Just tried to hammer it down and get make a few passes. And by the end, I just got tired and just tried to stick with it and ended up finishing the race in a decent result. Absolutely amazing, eh? Hey, 13, 13 years old, you don't see that very often, do you? Especially not from UK. Maybe these European lads, but you're passing them European lads out there. I've never rode a track as rough in my life, really. <laughs> Just really bumpy, really choppy, and deep as ruts. Biggest track ever. And I think they rip it a lot deeper. In every corner, there's sort of like eight ruts, all really chopped out, you know, you've got World champions going around, they're uh, getting the power down in the ruts, and then you've got to try and get them around them. So they've got like big holes in them and stuff, and they're all really deep. Yeah, I mean that's exceeded all expectations. So 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 proud. It's so diff so much more difficult than, than than what we're really used to. The jumps and stuff are just different level, and so are the riders. So yeah, really really pleased. In the first race I uh, was P16. Coming through to P12, it dropped it and then finished P16. In the second race, I'm hoping to get a better start and work my way up to hopefully a P10. First race, the beginning was quite good to be honest. I got off to a good start, uh, managed to make a few passes on the first lap. I think I got into third. I had a, a lap or two there, which I was really happy with. Dropped back a couple of positions after a little tip off. And then um, going up one of the hills, I just made a little mistake. Uh, silly really. And just caught my shoulder a bit, but I'm all good. I'm all ready to go for tomorrow. It's day two here at Matley Basin. We're getting ready for race two of the MX125 class and everything will be decided then. Let's get ready for the gate drop. The final EMX moto of the weekend is at go. And it looks like we've got a little less carnage this time around on the opening lap, which is good to see. Yeah, 
appears as though we've got a bunch of Brits all battling for top 15 positions. We've got Musto, Belgian, Beanie, Rhys Jones, Tyler Hooley and James Barker all up there in the mix inside the top 15 early on. Seems as though Joe Brooks is struggling with that shoulder issue though early on in this race. So not such a great start for Brooks this time around. But once again, it is Charlie Heyman, the lead Brit rider. He's up inside the top 10 once again on his SJP KTM. So another great ride from Charlie Heyman, leading the way for the British lads, giving the hometown crowd something to cheer about. But Ben Musto also looking impressive early on in race number two, the 163 MGMX KTM. A strong top 15 position. He's got company from Walbini and Oli Colmer. So the battle is on between the three Brit riders here. Oh, Tyler Hooley. He fought back so hard after a terrible start, but it looks as though he's got some bike issues. You can hear his bike spluttering around the track now, so he's falling back through the pack. The 13 year old Reese Jones, not such a hot start this time around, leaping over the head of James Barker there. They've got a nice little battle going on here in Moto 2. Oli Colmer fighting hard through the pack. He's made moves on Walbini and Ben Musto. But a late great crash undone all of his hard work there. They're back in the front of the pack once again. It's the Vanchik and the Yamaha riders going bar to bar, head to head, toe to toe. We've got six riders all in the same corner here pretty much. But it looks like it's going to be the 172 Vantic pilot, Cass Valp, holding on to take the race win. Charlie Hayman kept a cool head to bring it home in ninth position, which will earn him a sick overall on the weekend. Okay, so that's EMX 125 race two done and dusted, and we saw another great show in from our British lads. Charlie Hayman finished in ninth, another solid top 10 result for him. This is supposed to be the only round that he's doing this year, but after that performance here this weekend, we'll see if he turns up to do any more EMX 125 races in the rest of the series. Elsewhere in the group, well, Beanie, a solid ride with him coming home in 14th. He bounced back strong after not feeling too well yesterday. He had a great battle all motor along with the likes of Ben Musto. Ashton Belgian was up there as well. Ashton fell back a bit towards the end. Uh, so yeah, Walbini 14th, Ben Musto 15th, Oli Colmer a strong ride again, battling all the way through the moto. He finished in a 17th position. Reese Jones up in the mix as well, James Barker, Tyler Hooley put in a great rider. He had a bad start, fought back into the mid pack, battling the whole way. Unfortunately, some bike problems towards the end knocked him out of contention. Right, well, you've just completed your first ever EMX 125 weekend. Second race there, a lot better year. You was feeling a bit rough yesterday, right? Yeah. Good night's sleep, come out, well rested today and top 15 result. How pumped are you with that? Yeah, I'm really happy. Um, my goal was to qualify and if I qualify, get in the top 25 and I accomplished two top 20s in both motos, uh, I'm over the moon. I can't even express my feelings, I'm absolutely ruined. So. <laughs> you look more like yourself in that one. I saw you not the best to start, but you're charging forward, making passes and like throwing whips and stuff and looking more comfortable on the bike today, right? Yeah, yeah, what yeah. was the track like in that last one? Yeah, it was brutal. Really, really square edged and dry, but to be honest, um, that's like really the best that I ride on. So yeah, I've really enjoyed it. So on to the next one now. You're doing the full series, right? So you've got the first one out of the way. You know what to expect. What's the goals for the rest of the year? Uh, yeah, just stay consistent. Like top 20s, if I can get that, uh, I'll be pumped again. But like, like I say, it's the first ever year on the uh, 125 and first ever time doing the EMX as well. First time being back at this level in like five years. So. Yeah, it's definitely a learning curve for me and I just hope I can carry this momentum and get a job done. Sweet, nice one mate, good work this weekend and I think you've done LDR proud, haven't you? Yeah. All round, a great showing from the British lads here this weekend. They've done us proud, they've done all the crowd here proud as well. I think the future's bright for a British 125 motocross. We'll see these lads at the British Championship in a few weeks time. I think it's going to be a great season. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this look at the EMX 125 Championship. What a weekend it was. Let us know if you want to see more 125 race action this year and we'll try and make it happen. And be sure to subscribe to MXGP TV if you want to catch all of the GP races in full each and every weekend. But as always guys, my name's Max, this is 999 Laser. Until next time, I'll see you at the track.